me. Either you've got to know everything or adhere to the God who does know all things. First, first of all, what's wrong with appealing to absurdity? So Justin, he says, I, I'd like to know how I can receive Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't know any of the back end information. So I asked myself, so what, what made you call us? He said, well, this is an interesting story. He said, I was on the New Jersey boardwalk. He said, and there was a trap laying on the ground on the boardwalk. He said, no. he said, what is that? And he picked it up and he said, I looked in the back of it and he said, I'm, I've been having a, a pretty rough go of it the past few months. And he said, I read the back of it and he said, Tommy, I need Jesus in my life. He said, my life is a mess. And he said, and I began reading it about how I've broken God's law. He said, I just, I just realized I need Jesus Christ. So I asked some more probing questions and we talked about fruit and he didn't receive Christ at that moment. But he said that he was searching. I was able to get him plugged in into a church. And then he said, well, i got to go. And he held the phone. But I did have a number. So I called him back two or three times, but never could get in touch with him again. You never know what God's going to do with, with a gospel track. You just don't know. And here's this guy. Some person picked it, took the track out of my hand. They looked at me. It's a cheap jump. They threw it on the ground. And he went on about their business. But Jer uh, Justin came by, he picked it up and read the back of it. And he called me and asked me how he could follow Jesus. So you never know what God's going to do with a gospel track. At the end of this lesson, there are two YouTube links. Or maybe I put them on last week's lesson. Yes. Did anybody watch the YouTube links? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Me, they, they were informative, but they didn't tell me, like, okay, what are the techniques for using tracks? Okay. Didn't go into that, that. That's that's what we're going to deal with today. Okay. Was one of them the old man from George Street? Yes. yes. Isn't that amazing? That was that amazing. amazing. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Is this the last of the ones from three? That was yeah. the, the links in lesson three. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So phenomenal. So today we're going to be dealing with the practical of how to use these tracks and to to use these tracks in the right way, in the right form. So. Remember this, this is so practical and I don't want to miss this because it's very, very important. Tracks are good if you have them. <laughs> and I cannot overemphasize, overemphasize this. That's why I make a lot of my tracks card form. Now, if you're like Paul Rodnack, I'm not boasting on him, so Paul won't let you take it too big. But Paul, he is a track machine. This man, he keeps tracks everywhere he carries bags with him, and he tracks like he's going crazy. He's a, he's a great tracker. But for, for most of us who, who don't carry on bags on us a lot, you have to have your tracks available, and you have to have your, your wallet a place for men designated in your wallet where your tracks stay. My tracks, like I said earlier in the very beginning of the first lesson, my tracks stay in a little flip in my wallet. So in, in my wallet right now, I have three different types of tracks. I have a thank you track, I have the ABCs of evangelism, and then I have the $100 question, but I have the older version, so I want you, I want you to see the new version. I have the $100 question, and then I have which you should always have, because if you're in the Cary area, you belong to this church. But I have my church family card, so I can invite people to church. And then me being the, the guy in the ministry, I have, have my business card, but you don't have to have that. Now, you may think, well, how do I get them all in there? They, they fit right, right nice in there, and you see they're nice and clean. One thing about your tracks, you don't want to give out tracks that are crumpled up, that are folded and look nasty. Because remember, you're honoring Jesus Christ in your tracking. You're, so you want your tracks to be clean, you want them to be neat, you want them to be well, well kept. So you have to have your tracks on you. So what I do is, I, my wallet in my home, I have a specific location, I keep my wallet and my phone. Now behind my wallet, I have a, a divider. One, two, three, four, it has four dividers. In my dividers, I keep my tracks. So when I get home, and this is just from experience, when I get home and I know I have given out tracks to two cashiers, I have stopped by the gas pump, so I put a $100 question track in the gas pump, 
I had been uh, down the beer aisle, I dropped a few tracks in the beer, or whatever I did there, I know I'm empty. So when I get back home, I fill my wallet back up. Because one thing I've learned over the years, if my wallet gets empty and I don't have my tracks near me to where I'm at, I won't fill it back up for a while until God begins to convict me and go, wait a minute, I'm out of tracks. You can also keep tracks in your vehicle. Um, I have a stash of tracks in my vehicle, which Paul made a good reference to that one time. So keep, find out, get some type of method where you can fill your wallets back up when they run out. And out of sight, out of mind. That old saying is, is so true. Another, another thing we need to think about also is the different, as Eric was talking about, the different types of tracks we have and how to use these specific tracks. So let, let me explain. I'm not going to use the $100 track or the $100 question track like I use the thank you track. I am not going to use the thank you track like I use the ABCs of evangelism track. And I am not going to use any of these tracks like I use the what is order track. And I'm not going to use the what is order track like I use, excuse me, I forgot to bring these up, like I use the God track. All of these have different contexts in which you use it. So let me explain that. So I'm at a restaurant, or I'm at a checkout counter. I usually do not leave the $100 question track. I will look at the waitress. I'll leave a really good tip. But the first thing I do when I go into a restaurant and I'm having a meal with my family or my wife is when my waitress comes up, I check out the, 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 the area I'm, I'm located. Because one thing about a waitress, I know my wife used to be a waitress, so I know they have specific areas that they're over. If my waitress has 10 to 15 tables and she's running like a chicken with her head cut off, I am not going to have a long gospel conversation with her. I'm just not. I don't think it would be, it would, it would take away from her work ethic. But if my waitress, she has time and the restaurant is not full, I may go into a detailed gospel conversation with her. But one thing I can do for my waitress is simply ask her this. When she brings me my drinks, before we order, I simply look into her face. I, I usually say her name because she's got her name tag. And I ask her, Melanie, how can I pray for you? Most of the times they're taken back by that because they have never had anybody ask them that question. Most of the times they're silence, and they'll say something like this. We'll pray for my mother, pray for my kids. Just pray for me to have a good shift. Some of them are just exhausted. Just pray for me to have a good shift. So you can, you can pray for that person right when you pray for your meal. And what I'll do is I'll leave a, a very generous tip or, or, or at least 20% and I'll leave them this thank you track. And on the back of it, it just simply says, thank you for serving us so well. Now will you allow me to serve you? I want to share with you the most important thing that you could ever think about. God, your creator, is holy. And I give a scripture reference. Then we go on to talk about sin. And we talk about the commandments. And with the commandments, I give every scripture reference. And then we also talk about receiving a free Bible and going to uh, this specific one is, is, a, is a bad printout. I had to get rid of some of them. But this is a, usually I have a website to my, my website where you receive a free Bible and more information about following Jesus. Also, I use these tracks at any cashier clerk. I, I go to in Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot or the gas station. I'll just, after, when they're, when they're ringing me up, I'll just pull out my wallet and grab my debit card and I'll grab one of these right along with it. And so when I scan my card, she gives me the receipt, I give her this. I said, thank you so much for serving me. And almost every time, I've never had anyone reject these. They always smile at me and they go, well, thank you so much. And I'll tell them, don't forget to read the back of it. It's got a very important message on it. So that's how I use the thank you card. Now the $100 question card, this is uh, a spinoff of Ray Comfort's. Ray Comfort is, is one of my mentors I look up to. So he's got the million dollar question, the bill. Paul, you got one of those bills on you? I think I've got one right here. Okay, there you go. <laughs> So this is just 
me creating a smaller version of this. Uh, the wording's a little different, but the message is the gospel message. Uh, you can get these from Living Waters if you if you like these. But when I put these in my wallet, they're folded. And I like to have a nice clean card, so that's why I, I give these out. This has got the $100 question in. This, this or this can start any con conversation anywhere, basically. So what this has in the back of it is the $100 question. This has, of course, the million-dollar question, which is the same question. Is where are you going to go? What's going to happen to you spiritually when you die? Or where are you going to go when you die? And with that question, you can spring right into the WDJD method. You can ask them, well, so where are you going to go when you die spiritually? And they go, well, I've been thinking about it a lot, but I really don't know. You can ask them, well, do you think you're a pretty good person? And then go right into the WDJD method. You hand these out at street festivals. You can, you can, I leave these in the gas car slots at gas pumps. Uh, I'll leave these sitting on tables at restaurants, um, just walking by, I can just, I'll lay it down. You can put these cards anywhere where you go. I have, I've run a little test on them before. I've, I've put them up at the counter right before the cash clerk at like a coffee shop, and I just sit one right there and get it, sit on the table and, and see how many people have to come by before they pick one up. And it's usually about three or four people, and then somebody will finally pick it up and put it in their pocket. So you never know what God can do with a track like this. So what's the difference between the $100 question track and the what is order track? Now this is a, a thicker gospel track. This is more of a booklet. Yes. Okay. Let's say you're out on the street with me or you're sharing the gospel with a group from your church or you're, you had an EE visit or, or something like that. So, so whatever you may be doing, that you've had a, a longer conversation with somebody and they are asking some really good questions. They are really tracking with you about the Christian faith. What this booklet does, it takes the word order and it walks down through an acrostic to explain the origin of where we were created and how we were created. So we, we talk about God and then it goes to the first R, which is reality. What happened to you and me? So we talk about sin we talk about the effects of sin upon the human race. And then we go to the D, which is what God has done for us. Okay, so then they walk through what God has done in His mercy, in His grace through Jesus Christ on the cross. And then the E is, it's evident to you. It's evident in your conscience and through creation. So everybody knows that God exists. Everybody knows He exists because of two major things. Your inner whistleblower, which is your conscience, and then the power of creation around us. And finally, the last R is respond to the gospel message. We want people to respond to this gospel message. So this is a more detailed booklet with someone who is really, really counting the cost of following Christ and really wants to know more about following Jesus. Also... Let's go now to the ABCs of evangelism. Yeah, I, that one, that's curious. Where would you use that? Yeah, okay. ABCs of evangelism is something I made up just because I live in the South. So let me explain what that is. In the South, we have a lot of churches. We have a lot of people who attend church. Have you ever heard it called the Bible Belt? Yes. I mean, that, it's called the Bible Belt. So a lot of people know the Christian lingo. They will come up and they'll go, yeah, I'm a Christian. And the next thing they'll say is, I go to church. So what I found through doing this year after year, day after day, week after week, I had to come up with some way or leave something with these people who said they were Christians. But as I began asking questions, they didn't know how to share the gospel they didn't know what he meant to be saved. So what I did with this little track, it's called the ABCs of Evangelism, it serves two purposes. For someone who works through this little track, they will be able to determine whether they're a genuinely born again believer. And if they genuinely are, then they will be able to have a method in which they can go out and share the gospel themselves. 
So let's say you're out in the streets with me or you decide to come out to one of our events to share the gospel, not to do some one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And you've forgotten the WDJD method and you want a refresher. Just pull out your ABCs of evangelism because it's right on the bottom. So you can use this as kind of like a little cheat sheet. Because I've also seen that in, in people come out with me and they get nervous and they go, Tommy, I really want to share my faith, but I've forgotten how to share it. And that's another reason why I made ABCs of evangelism. So with the person who comes up to me who says they're Christian, and I ask them this question, how can I be saved? And they stare at me. The first thing I do is I begin to walk them down through this track. The, the, so this is a good review for us. I said I was going to do this every day, every week I came in. We had the P... V of what? God. God. Okay, then we have the P V of man. And then we have the P V of God. Nope. No gospel. Gospel. Good job. I was getting ready to sing the Jeopardy song. <laughs> and then we have proper response. Okay, so what this does, it gives you an opportunity to walk this person through every one of these theological points. Remember I told you theology matters? It really does, especially when you're sharing the gospel. So now I'm going to walk this person through Isaiah 4, chapter 40, verse 25 where it talks about God being holy. I'm going to walk this person through Jeremiah 6.11, where it talks about God being wrathful. I'm going to walk this person through Psalms 9.16, where it talks about God being just. I'm going to walk this person through John 3.16. I'm going to touch on it right now at that moment, on God being merciful. Then I'm going to walk him, number two, the proper view of man, of her. I'm going to walk them through Romans 1, verse 21. Man is rebellious. I'm going to walk him through Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, and then I'm going to go down to point number three, the proper view of the gospel. I'm going to walk him through 1 Peter 3.18. For Jesus Christ came once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. I'm going to take him down through that paragraph in John 3 we talked about, right? John 3.16 through John 3.21. And we're going to talk about what it means to believe, how he can do that. And then I'm going to challenge him to respond in repentance faith. Repentance and faith. And then if he rep responds in repentance and faith, he'll see what? He will see fruit. Matthew 4, 17. Acts 16, 31. Matthew 7, 16. Okay? And then at the end, if this person is tracking with me and they're genuinely born again, I'm challenging them to examine fruit in their life and if they still saying, yes, I, I, I'm a born again Christian, I'm bearing fruit in my life, I see fruit in my life, I just challenge them to go examine themselves to make sure they're saved and then I go, well, I'll tell you what, here's a little method. W-D-J-D. Okay? And I want you to apply this to your life by going out and share it with somebody else. If when I get down to point number four, they're still unsure and they're really, be, they're really beginning to become convicted, I'm going to challenge them to be born again. I'm going to challenge them to repent and put their faith in Christ. Does that make sense? So that's how you can use this track. It's a two-fold track. It's for the unbeliever and for the believer alike. Okay? So that's a very little important track to have in your wallet on your person when you're out sharing your faith. When I'm out sharing my faith, I think of my pockets as different sections. So uh, it, it, it's something so simple, but when, I'm telling you, when you're on the streets, you need to have these things in mind. I keep my $100 question here. I keep my seasonal tracks here, and we'll talk about those soon. I'll keep my ABCs track most of the time here in this pocket. 
and I'll keep my God track or my bigger booklet tracks here in my right pocket. Because when you're talking with somebody, you need to be able to get to these specific tracks pretty quickly. Okay. So and when I'm when I'm handing out tracks, this is something so practical. But when somebody's walking past you, Paul, can you stand up just for a bit? Walk past me for a moment. And they're walking past quick. I'm trying to make eye contact. Yeah. Hey, got one of these yet? So I'm trying to to look at them and go, hey, have you got one yet? And, and stick it right to their hand. Because as they walk by, they'll grab it. If they're willing to take it, they'll grab at it. But you've got you to gotta be able to put it there pretty quickly. Yeah. Go ahead. You want to give me five, ten minutes to talk about a little application on track passing out? Sure. Is that all right? Sure. I'm just thinking, is this a good it. time? Go ahead and do it now. Yeah. All right. So you had a question about where. And, and here's, here's the thing. You need people, obviously, right? You need people around you, and that's one thing. I love to be around big crowds, not because I'm a people person, I didn't used to be, but because when I became saved, now I like people to share the gospel with. And Tommy brought up the point of this, that would be, that application would be at an event where you have people walking by you a lot, or maybe at an airport or somewhere where there's people walking by you. That, or anywhere, and I'll just run down a few. So, so the places I pass out tracks, and I'm not trying to say, right now I've kind of, I'm growing in my, I've, even through the years, I've gotten better at tracks. And now, roughly my track, I just, my track budget is nearly around $1,200 a year. I have to spend on the amount of tracks. Because if I travel for a job, I might pass out somewhere between four and six, 700 tracks. Just, I'm traveling. Wow. Now, now, the way you do that, now that this is not, and one thing, I'm not trying to boast about this. Some people may pass out three. I'm, I'm saying that's wonderful. God, God, God uses that. And I'm a little bit more uh, direct in my pass, track passing out. Now, the, the, you want to, like Tommy was saying, let's just talk about airport for a minute. I might go in, I might have an hour to my flight. I'm going to stand somewhere where people are passing me on both directions. And I have tracks there. And I'm going to look. I'm, I'm going to visualize the people that are coming at me this way. What are they doing right now? If someone's on their phone, they're not going to get a track. Is this person? I'm going to say, "Have you had a good flight? I hope you had a good flight." And I'm going to use something, and I'm going to say something to them that's about the moment, not just, "Did you get one of these?" That's great if you do that. I might say, "God bless you." Look at the person directly in the eyes. That eye contact is showing you're trying. Basically, I'm trying to develop a personal relationship with that person in the two or three seconds I have. Mm -hmm. Or now, <clears throat> shifting gears, and that's a great place, I could pass out hundreds at that location. Um, restaurants. Restaurants, I'm a, again, don't do what I do. I pray before I do what I do, and it, I'm, the Lord leads me to pass out tracks a certain way. So I go into a restaurant. If I'm alone for on business, then I'm gonna have a more time I have collected. I'm gonna go around the tables, I'm gonna assess, kind of look, look at the restaurant. I'm gonna see people around me. If they're kind of having, you know, if they're engaged in deep conversation, I might pass them by. But I will walk around the restaurant and say, God bless you, and pass them a track and walk around to everybody in the restaurant, slowly, courteously, watching out for waitresses, trying to be receptive. This is after I've ordered my meal, I might go do this. And then once I've ordered my meal, I've eaten my meal, I'm going to go back to see if anybody in the restaurant has changed hands. So if there might be a turnover, and I'm going to cautiously go around, I'm not going to be aggressively. I used to be, years ago, I was a little bit more anxious about this. I'd kind of go around and pass them out. I don't do that anymore. I kind of go slowly, look at the person, say, God bless you. Move on and say, God bless you. Because no one usually, everybody wants a blessing. Whether they're an atheist or not, they usually want a blessing. You know, does that make sense what I'm saying? And if they look like they're going to be interrupted, I'm just going to walk by. Or if God's not leading me to that table, I might just walk by. So I, that's, again, I use prayer to do that. Um, anywhere I go, so grocery store. So that would be the cashier. But also, when you're in line waiting for your food, you give one to the cashier, and then you, say, you look at the one behind you. Hey, would you like one of these? Right behind you. Or in your line, would you like one of these? I'm a Christian. I pass out tracks. Would you like one of these? Just cautiously. They might say no. You say, fine. That's fine. You know, but... But you always smile, look them in the eye, and pass out the track. And here's just a few, or, or one more. Here's a, a Whole Foods. I go there on Fridays to get a, pick up a pizza for the kids. And they have a seating area waiting out there. So again, there's people sitting down to eat. Sometimes they're sitting back, they're just kind of not much to do. And they're just kind of eating their meal by, by themselves. They say, God bless you, here's a, here's a Christian track. I pass these out wherever I go. I'm a Christian, I pass them out. 
I just kind of do it lightly, not abrasively, not quick. If someone says, no, thank you, I say, okay, you know? Or at an event where there's an entrance coming in and out, and I had this happen in a Charlotte, yeah. and there's coming in and out, and I let the Spirit, I pray about this, and, and, and as they come in and out, I say, I say, ma'am, here's a track, put this in your purse. Here's a track, sir, put this in your wallet. And I, I see them, or put it in a pocket. They, they will take it and put it in their purse, they will take it and they will put it in your wallet, read it later. I know you don't have time now, read it later. Or at the airport, you're gonna sit down and wait for your flight, why don't you take this little something to read while you're waiting. Just any kind of thing like that to get them. And I say, and then half the time, these, these go into spiritual conversations and they stop and then you need to be ready for a, a, a conversation about that. So, um, and then those are just application places. Yeah. So anywhere, that's there's phenomenal. people. I mean, and, and, the, and good. here's just a couple of, just from those things, converse, here's a car service. This was, a, this was very interesting to me. I went, and, and every one of these places, I'm not some guy who's like, I still have fears about this thing, but I pray and I, I ask God to give me strength, and he does every time. You know, if, I, if I take the fear of man, then I'm not going to do it. But then um, I just go ahead and do it. So I, I was dropping the car off the, at, at the service center at uh, Nissan, where there's all these servicemen lined up in front. Now I have my tracks. The first thing I'm going to do is pass the guy I'm talking to a track. But I'm going to walk around to every serviceman there, and if he's not busy, I'm going to say, here's a track. Here's a little something to read. Here's a little something to read. I'm going to walk around. Basically, everybody in the entire service center, I'm going to try and pass them a track. So it's kind of like... Let's get this. Let's get people's minds on spiritual things. Now I left that. I came back to to, to bring. I think it was a car. I had to come back to get. When I went back there, everybody was like, "You you were here before, and you passed all these tracks." And I had three conversations. One person, um, two two full gospel presentations Thank because God. of the tracks I had passed out earlier. Because those, mm -hmm. those little missionaries had gone out mm -hmm. and done the work on the hearts. And now people were coming up to me. Weren't you guys here before? Passing all these tracks. And I said, sure, yeah. And it got into two very deep gospel presentations from that experience. And I was kind of blown away that myself. Amen. Amen. And that's it. God kind of has shown me those things. Like it, I, I probably have a few more stories about that, but I'm not going to get take the lesson too much off. Amen. Well, that. And then one more thing on the booklets. The booklets, so again, all kinds of, I love those websites. I, I buy tracks. Any kind of track, I have a kind of a, I had a, I had a conversation with somebody and he was hung up on the fact that he doesn't know when he's gonna die. I gave him an appointment with a death card because he doesn't know when he's gonna die. And that was, this, that was when I was in Houston this past week. And, um, but if now I sat next to a guy in the plane, he was, he seemed, um, he was an Anglican, um, but I didn't push him on too much of the thing, but I went and I gave him uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. This, is, this goes through very similar what Tommy talked about. It focuses on repentance, the depravity of man. So I knew he was very susceptible of taking this, so it was kind of, it's kind of like a follow-up. The booklets are a follow-up. You don't give somebody a full booklet, they might just toss it. But you want to you give them a track, once you have a conversation with them, you might give them a Why Christianity track by Ray Comfort or something like that. Something that gives a nice little 20 page, something they might sit down and read through. And, and read through. And those, I've given those out to probably five on the last one I went to Houston, or Florida, I gave five of those out. We went, went through the full gospel and gave them a white Christianity and then like maybe a family follow car or something like that. Praise God. So it's just just understand that that if you make a promise to God, you may not be able to keep up with it because you may be sick from time to time. But just like the old man on George Street, what did he do? He purposed in his heart to do what? To hand out gospel tracts. And look, if you do three tracts a week, which I know you can do more than that because you get gas, you go to the store, you order things. Uh, so I know you can do at least three tracts a week. That'll be 144 a year. Do you realize how it can change people's lives? That's 144 gospel messages you've handed out this year. Wow. It's powerful. I mean, you may not be the old man on George Street, but I, you can be like him. You can be like him, and when you get to heaven, you're going to be amazed at what God may do through you. 